Hello again, everybody. So today we are going to talk about the most important question that you're going to ask when you go to buy one of these scooters. And that question is, does it have a title? Today we're going to talk about the difference between getting a title and getting a bill of sale and why it's so important, at least in the state of Texas, to have a title. Now, of course, we could go through each and every state and talk about what you need to obtain a title or what you need to register your bike. Of course, none of that has any meaning to me, so I can only talk to you today about what pertains to my situation. So, uh, of course, there's going to be a lot of differences between the state of Texas and possibly other states throughout the United States. So today... Uh, for this discussion, it'll be about registration in Texas. Now, you saw the ad in the paper, or you saw it on Craigslist, or OfferUp, wherever you saw it, and it doesn't tell you anything about whether it's got a clean title or if it's got a bill of sale. Usually, that's a good indication that it's got a bill of sale if there's nothing listed. Um, but again, that's going to be your first question when you go to ask the person, you know more about the bike and uh, if they come back at you and say oh it's a bill of sale it's good as gold I'll sign it for you and none of that means anything to the Texas DMV other than it's proof that it changed hands from the old owner to the new owner and what I mean by changing hands is now the bike belongs to you instead of them so let's put things in perspective when you go to the DMV and you have a clean title you just bought this bike and it's got a clean title from the previous owner, what's it going to cost? So it's going to cost you $120, and then it's going to have also a 6.25% sales tax on top of it. You could plan on paying at least $150 for this scooter. That's on a clean title, and um, that's just moving it from one owner to another. Okay, it only has a bill of sale, though. It doesn't have... A title now we got to get into those extra fees all the time that you're gonna waste and um, of course those are things that are valuable to you not only the money but the time running between offices so now you have to look at submitting a request for a bonded title that'll cost you $15 then in order to get a bonded title you have to get a surety bond which at a very basic, it's going to cost you another hundred dollars. That hundred dollars, uh, that's for zero to a four thousand dollar value, which is pretty much going to be every bike that you're going to get uh, into, at least when it comes to these small scooters. So plan on another hundred for that. Then it's another thirty to forty dollars to have, you know, a police officer take a look at the bike and verify that the VIN is for the bike. So at the very least, you're looking at another $150 and $160, not including the time to go to three different offices, and it's a pain. And that's at a, the minimum is around another $150. So <clears throat> I would say to be more accurate, another $200 is what's going to cost you. So when you go to bargain for this, now I have also looked at a few bikes in the past and uh, give you some examples. So I have two examples to show you today. This is my first example of an actual bike that I was going to buy last year. It's a 1987 Honda Spree and it had around 1100 miles on it. He wanted $700 for it and I had chatted back and forth with him and was getting ready to go and see the bike and I noticed that in the ad, there was nothing uh, about whether or not it had a title or a bill of sale. It had no inf information whatsoever. So I had asked him, I said, you know, what does this come with? He goes, oh, it, you know, it's never been registered. It was used on some property. You know, there's no need for it. Don't worry about it in Texas. And the guy had no idea what he was talking about. He kept on saying that the bike didn't need to be registered, that you know, don't worry about it. It's not going to cost you anymore. Those are all red flags from somebody who didn't know what he was talking about. 
So I ended up telling them, you know, okay, well, it, uh, it does need a title to ride it in Texas. And uh, he didn't care. I had asked for, you know, a little bit off the price because it's a pain. I'm pretty sure that the guy, when he purchased it, he mentioned he had to put some new turn signal lenses on it and that he didn't really do anything else to the bike and he didn't have it very long which kind of made me think, why is he selling it all of a sudden unless he realizes that he needs to get a title for it? You know, he couldn't tell me anything at all about the service history of the bike. He didn't do anything to the bike. He didn't upgrade anything on it. He didn't replace anything on it except for, like I said, the lenses. Lots of red flags going off in my mind and thinking, what am I going to get myself into here? You go back and look at my other videos and how important it is to ask the right questions when you buy these bikes. You know, not only are you going to have to pay more to get a bonded title, but as soon as you take the panels off and you take a look at all of the, you know, the parts that need to be replaced, the petcock, you know, all of the uh, gas line and vacuum line and everything else that's all dry rotted underneath from sitting for 30 plus years. Those are all things that you're going to have to add to the price of this once you buy it. The $200 in wasted cash that you had to use for a bonded title would have came in real handy on putting some new tires, battery, and other things in the bike. The other thing that this particular seller was trying to convey to me was how rare a Honda Spree is and how I wouldn't find another one, that I'd be missing an opportunity because there wasn't another one like this. And I just thought to myself, if you only knew what you were talking about. I mean, they sold hundreds of thousands of these in the mid-80s. The Honda Spree was the best-selling scooter that Honda had in the 80s, by far. No other scooter even comes close. And uh, <laughs> the first say it's rare is funny. Now, there is one that is kind of rare, and that's a lollipop green and white one. But even that one... I knew somebody that had worked at Honda uh, back in the 80s, and what he told me was that the 84 didn't sell real well. So they had an abundance of 84 white plastics that they needed to do something with. So they decided that they would create a special edition, and the only new plastic they had to create was the floorboard, and that's a green floorboard. But other than that, it's got the 84 plastics on an 86 with some new decals. So there you go. I don't know if there's any validity to that story, but I remember him telling it, and he was pretty convincing when he did. So just a little side story for you there. But uh, again, the Spree is uh, its a nice bike. I'm not taking anything away from it, but it's not a rare scooter, especially if you lived in the Midwest. These things were everywhere, and uh, you could find them anywhere you wanted. So I went and took a look at the bike in person, and right away looked at the tires the tires were marked from 1985 so i knew i had some old tires on hand you know that's just the first thought in my mind when i go and look at these bikes is if they at least took the time to replace the tires which are what keep you safe you know if they haven't even done that then i'm sure they didn't maintenance the rest of the bike uh, it looked great on the outside probably the same situation as ruby you know, she looked incredible until I took the panels off. And of course you can't do that in front of the customer, but I just didn't see the value anymore on this bike and definitely didn't value it at what it was going to cost me at the end of the day to get everything replaced on it. Um, after I looked at that bike, I saw this pretty white one. Now, this was actually from this year. This was for sale not too long ago for $850. And I would have went and got it for $850 if I would have gotten there. And uh, the tires, everything looked in order. Everything looked like it had been updated. And he had a, uh, a Texas title in hand. Uh, none of those things happened, though. Instead, he had no title. He had a bill of sale. He hadn't replaced anything or done anything with the bike. Everything was old. And I just don't see the value there. If you're going to get into the twelve, thirteen hundred dollar range on a spree, I don't think that a spree is worth that. Now you may, and uh, that's your opinion. But a bike that 
you know, they made hundreds of thousands of these. And then to have to go out and spend, you know, $1,200, $1,300, who knows? It might have even got even higher than that. You know, if it needs a battery, it needs tires, it needs petcock, it needs uh, gas and fuel lines, it needs, you know, you start adding up all these different things, and then you're up over twelve, thirteen hundred dollars even more. I don't find the value. So getting back to that original question, you know, this time I, it was kind of on me. I should have asked before I even got out there. You know, was this thing uh, with a bill of sale? And again, this is another guy who didn't see the value in a title. And um, at the end of the day, it there's so much value in it, especially if you go to sell it again. You know, it's easy for you to, to sell it to somebody and they're going to have good peace of mind. The same peace of mind that you want when you go to buy one. But uh, it ended up where I wasn't willing to do it again. I wasn't willing to pull the trigger on something with all the unknowns, no servicing, and uh, no title to speak of. There will be times where you'll break that rule and buy a bike with no title. And the first time I did it was with my first bike I purchased, which was Ruby the Elite. She did not come with a title, but she came with a bunch of other things as well as the uh, previous owner delivered it to my house, which made it great because I didn't have a title, I didn't have a plate, you know, and it was quite a ways away from where I lived. He helped me out with that. And he also gave me a radio, a Kenwood radio, that was never installed in any other bike. It was for an Elite 250. Uh, it didn't work on this bike, but I turned around and I sold that. Uh, I think I got five or $600 for it. So that ended up paying for a lot of the parts that I ended up buying. The new tires, all the different things, the carb. When you think of all the money that I've put into this bike since owning it, you know, that $550, I got offset a lot of it. So it didn't really bother me. I didn't want to get into something that was going to far exceed the value like the other two bikes, the two sprees I just showed you. You know, after I would have put uh, money into the bonded titles, who knows how much I would have gotten into when it comes to all the parts and everything in order to get it up to fine running order. You know, in order for me to put somebody on that bike, I would have had to have invested probably at least a few hundred dollars in each one just to get those bikes running in uh, tip-top shape because that's very important to me. It's the first thing I do when I buy these is make sure everything is uh, running as well as it needs to be. And um, now the second bike that I just recently purchased is this 87 Elite 50. Again, I didn't get anything free with it, but I was able to negotiate $300 off of the original price. That way, that's going to pay for uh, the bonded title that I'm going to have to get for it, plus the new tires I'm going to have to buy. So it offset a little bit. So by the time I put some money into it, you know, I'm at six or seven hundred dollars and I could live with that. But uh, if he would have originally said, absolutely not, I'm only selling it for six hundred, I wouldn't have bought it. Um, just because I know there's going to be quite a bit of work that's going to have to be put into it. And that was going to far exceed the value. Uh, some folks will say this is worth, you know, twelve, fourteen hundred dollars. It is, as long as it's in a good running order. I mean, not where you take the panels off and you see that everything is falling apart on it. And then uh, you try to get on the bike and, you know, you blow a tire after a mile or so. So when you put everything in perspective, keep in mind you're probably going to try to buy something from an owner who just had it stored in his basement or his garage, never did a dang thing to it, cleaned the carb, got it started and said here you go it's in fine running order and then when you really take a closer look at it all the different things it's going to need the tires everything that's dry rotted all the things that aren't working up to snuff keep those things in mind and use them as bargaining tools if they do not have a title uh, because at the end of the day if you're getting a bill of sale they're short changing you you know they didn't care enough in order to keep the bike registered that's the way I view it, is, is pure laziness. You didn't want to do anything with it. You didn't want to register it. You didn't want to take care of it. It's like you're, you're doing a justice by getting this bike from them to begin with. You know, take it away from somebody who's neglected it in every fashion. And um, 
but you just have to make sure that you use your bargaining chips correctly and 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 tell them you know there's a lot of things i'm going to have to do to it it's going to cost me my time and money to get it properly titled because you didn't want to deal with it so just keep those things in mind and um keep in mind what it costs your time costs you money too everything is worth money to you so that's going to do it for this video and uh, if you have any questions for me or any comments you know please let me know please subscribe to my channel if you like the content and uh, i look forward to seeing you next time see you later